Good morning, everybody. We are going to get going in a second here. I'm just settling myself down, grabbing my uh, coffee and putting it in a spot where I'm not going to knock it over. <laughs> All right, Mr. Sitches, I think we can head over to the craft table. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. I'm uh, sipping a cup of coffee. Oh, that is so good. And we are we are going to play some more with Granny Squares today. This is a mitered Granny Square. I absolutely love these. And this is an extra large mitered Granny Square. So we previously did a tutorial on making a mitered granny square. It's your sort of usual six to eight inch size square. But recently we've had a lot of questions about making them larger, uh, making an entire blanket with them. And I thought it was high time that we did a extra large mitered granny square. So this beauty is 16 inches. Um, that will change based on the yarn you use, the hook you use, and of course, you know, how many rows you wanna put into it. But I figured we would make one of these today. Um, obviously with 16 inch squares, you can whip up a big blanket awfully quick. <laughs> um, and this is just, I mean, I, uh, I just love seeing this much color blocking all in one place. So, uh, I hope you're all comfortable. You've got yourself a nice little beverage. Um, you can put your feet up, relax, hang out in the chat with everybody. I see the chat there. I've got uh, one eyeball on it. Mr. and Stitches is still down the well. We have uh, not quite worked out a second microphone scenario yet, um, or the baby monitor. Some people told me I should put a baby monitor out there with them. I love that idea. <laughs> but uh, he's got plenty of coffee and plenty of little miniature chocolate Easter eggs left over from last weekend. So uh, he's good and chocolified. I think he'll be just peachy. <laughs> Um, and I hope all of you had a lovely week, had a lovely weekend last weekend. I know not everybody had a long weekend. Um, some of us did, uh, and not everybody um, does Easter, which I get. Um, so, you know, I hope if you if you had the long weekend, if you celebrated Easter, it was lovely and pleasant for you, and maybe you at least got to see some friends and family. Um, and if you don't do that, I really hope the weather was nice, because I feel like the Easter weekend is often the weekend where spring makes uh her presence known <laughs> and we've been enjoying some nice temperatures of late it's just so nice to be able to walk outside and not feel like i've got to uh, tuck my chin down up against my chest and, and sort of like brace myself against a cold biting wind um so it is it's been a lovely week of lovely temperatures and sunshine so i hope at least everybody got that and um Thank you also for taking part in our anniversary sale. We had our big anniversary sale last weekend and uh, that was over at our Etsy shop and also in our spring shop. I think the spring shop sale is still going. There's a promo code. We'll make sure that's linked below somewhere um, at the end of the live stream. Um, and if there's anything in the spring shop you were interested in looking at getting, I think the spring shop's 25% off right now with the promo code. Um, we'll make sure the promo code is, is posted somewhere. So uh, that is that. Let us talk granny squares. Um, I'm using my usual hook. Uh, actually, I'm not using my usual hook. I'm using my usual yarn needle, pair of scissors. I've got my measuring tape here today so that we can um, sort of take a look at our progress as we go. And I decided to opt for a slightly larger hook. I know last time when we were talking about granny squares, I mentioned that I really like to use um, larger hooks, like a seven millimeter uh, maybe even an eight millimeter, but usually maybe a seven millimeter. This is a six millimeter. I have a 6.5 millimeter somewhere, but I don't know where it's at. <laughs> um, so this is a J hook, size six millimeter J hook. I think it's also known as a 10. That's the hook I've opted to use today. I'm using size four medium weight yarn, acrylic, the usual stuff, but I'm going to talk about how Varying the weight of your yarn can vary the outcome of your square size and even some of the shaping, depending on your tension and how to sort of adjust your tension as you go. So, for example, in the in the 
blanket square I've got beneath me. This is the orange I used, the sky, which I'm going to use again today, is technically considered a size four, but it's like a, it's closer to a three or a DK weight, in my opinion. Um, I know it's acrylic, but I have absolutely no idea um, anything else about it because um, this is a hand-me-down ball of yarn from Mama and Stitches. Um, I absolutely love this color. It's like sorbet orange or creamsicle orange. It's just, oh, it's a heavenly orange. I love it. Um, but I, and I want to put it in like a million different projects, but it's not a, it's not a medium weight, like a true size four weight or what I would often consider a size four. This green, which I'm using is a size four. This is a Burnett super value or super big value. I can't remember the name of it. I don't have its its uh, casing anymore, but I know it's a Burnett. It's 100% acrylic, just like this one, but you can see that it's much thicker than the orange one. So that does make a difference. This is what I would call a DK weight, the orange, and this one's about a medium weight, but I'm using them both in the same square, and I'm going to sort of alter, alter my tension just a little bit in order to keep my stitches the same size. And you can see those two things right here up against each other. So there's, I start with the orange color and then I move into the green. You can see that the shells in the orange are just a little thinner than the shells in the green. Um, I love those two colors together. This is so spring to me. Uh, but, but that thinner weight yarn, even though I can get a nice size stitch and the shell doesn't look thin, it's definitely smaller than the green one next door. Not a big deal, but it does require you to be conscious of your tension. So if you are mixing together weight categories, which is perfectly acceptable in something like a blanket or a blanket square, like this one, just be aware that if you're mixing in a lighter weight yarn with your medium or heavy weight yarns, um, you don't necessarily have to change your hook size, but you do have to vary kind of your tension. And I'll talk a little bit about that when I get to it. Um, the rest of my yarns are the, this lovely, um, what is this one? This one is a patent, I think, uh, this is a wool blend. So actually this is a hundred percent wool. So I'm breaking my own rule here and I'm mixing acrylics with a hundred percent wool, but when, and if you do this, so it's helpful to know what's in your yarn, if you mix together different fibers, so weight category is one thing. Mixing different fibers is another. I think a lot of you have probably seen that blanket I made where I made the whole thing out of acrylic and then I gave it a border using wool. I didn't realize it was wool. Tossed it in the washing machine. The wool shrunk. The acrylic didn't. And the border went right. And so now I've got like a really pretty blanket with like what looks like a, a, a pinched border all the way around it. Not the end of the world because it's my blanket, but boy, would that be a bummer if you made something for someone and they washed it, and then part of the yarn shrunk, and the rest of it didn't. So because I know this is wool, when I go to wash these squares, whatever they wind up being, probably a lap blanket, I'm thinking, I'll talk a little bit more about that later, I want to remember to hand wash my blanket, or gentle wash in the washing machine, like we're talking like the gentlest cycle you've got, on cool, so no heat in the water, cool water, hand wash or gentle wash, and then lay flat to dry. And your wool shouldn't pill, neither should the rest of your yarn for that matter. Um, and it definitely shouldn't shrink because wool shrinks in hot water and it shrinks in a hot dryer. Um, so I'm going to be conscious of that. I want it to stay looking nice with the rest of my blanket. The reason I'm mixing fibers is because I'm using up some of the oddballs that I've had in my stash for a long time. I absolutely love this color. Um, let's see, what is it? It's This is Patton's Classic Wool. This is a really old ball of yarn. I've had it for like 20 years. And the title of it is, it's just a dye lot, color 77531. Oh, wait, there it is, Current. This is the color Current. I guess they mean as in like the berry, Current. Are currants berries? <laughs> I've never really thought of that before. I guess they kind of are. They have like a little seed in the middle, right? Anyway, I absolutely love this color. It's been sitting in my stash forever. I also love the way it interacts with this, this creamsicle orange and this beautiful light gossamer spring green. And then I finished the whole thing off with a darker gray. This is also 
a size DK or three weight yarn that I've mixed with my, so this is a size three DK weight. These two are size four medium weights. These are acrylic, this is wool, this is acrylic. Um, this is a size three DK, so I've had to vary up my tension again. And then, because I, I like this color of uh, this Aran kind of natural colored uh, yarn, I didn't have one ball of it, I had two balls of it and they were size one fingering weight. So I held two balls of that together to come up to what's roughly a size four medium weight yarn. But this is just a little bit thicker than these two. So I again, had to vary my tension a little bit, but I didn't change my hook. We'll talk about all of that as we work. That's the preliminary. If at any time you have some questions, about mitered granny squares, um, please feel free to ask them in the chat. Mr. and Stitches will do his best to sort of grab uh, any of the pertinent questions he can see. I know he's, I can hear him tapping out there, so I know he's busy. Um, and uh, we'll just, we'll just start going. I'm going to have a little sip of my coffee because it's, it's calling my name. Shout out to um, our uh, membership milestones. We got some membership milestones. We got some new members. Welcome, members. If you're new, welcome back, members. If uh, and some oh, and some super stickers. Oh, I miss them. I'm so busy looking at my big granny square here and talking. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Uh, usually, I have a chance to go back through the stream and check out the live chat replay when the whole thing is said and done because I do like to sort of see what everybody's up to. Um, if you've got a question and we don't get to it or we miss it for some reason. Uh, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below the video because I absolutely get a chance to do the comments. I can do that at my own pace um, and I can do my best to uh, answer your question if you've got them. Like I said, we've already got a tutorial on how to make a mitered granny square, but we thought we would make an extra large one today because it's a little bit different. It's pinned above. Oh, Mr. and Stitch has pinned our original tutorial. So look at him being fantastic. I love it. Okay, let's jump in. I am going to, this is just so darn pretty. I think I'm just going to leave it below me while I work. Um, all right, so uh, usually I say I like pull my yarn from the inside of the ball, but this one is kind of a disaster and it's a thin yarn, so I don't want to tempt fate. So I'm actually going to unroll the ball from the outside, which is you're going to see me kind of like bumping this thing around and around and around, but I've got it kind of in a little bucket just off to the side. So hopefully it won't roll right off the table on me, but I'm going to unwind a whole bunch of yarn here to get going. And uh, I'm going to start with a regular granny square. What's up, Mr. and Stitches? I did a poll on the current thing. Oh, oh, whether they're berries or whether they're berries or not. What are they? Does anybody know? Say yes, 40% say unsure. Okay. 11% say no. <laughs> <laughs> currents, currents. Vivi just asked, I saw it. Vivi just asked what a current is. And as far as I know, a current is like a little. Um, like a, aren't they kind of like raisins? Like a yeah, they're like a cranberry or a raisin, kind of. Like, is it, is. Okay, here's the question. Is a current the thing that something that's dried up shrinks down to? Like a prune is actually a plum. Uh, a raisin is actually a grape. Is a current actually like uh, another berry? Or is a current, um, in my brain, I'm confusing. I have to admit, I'm confusing. The internet says it's a berry. The internet says it's a berry. Okay. Because um, I'm in my brain, when I say the word current, I know the color. But I instantly jumped to the inside of a pomegranate, you know, all the little tiny like seeds that come out of a pomegranate that actually have like the edible bit wrapped around them. That's kind of the thing that jumps to mind. I know that that's not a current, but <laughs> that's what jumps into my head. All right, I'm going to start a regular old granny square. We just did a live stream talking about granny squares. Um, a couple people said, hey, you know, uh, what about joining your rows with a half double crochet or um, reversing every other row. And I was fiddling around with that this morning. I found that if you join a row with a half double crochet, it's kind of like the equivalent of two chains. So I think that's too much for me. So I tried joining rows with a single crochet and it 
it's I don't know that I like it any better than the way I do it. Um, but I was fiddling with that this morning, but I'm going to go back to the way I usually do my granny squares just for the sake of today's tutorial. Um, I've started with a chain five. I'm going to make a ring and I'm going to work my first row into the ring. So it's a nice ring. It fits over top of my finger comfortably. Chain threes at the beginning of every row count as a double crochet. Double crochet is really the only stitch we're using. A shell is three double crochet. I chain two for my first corner. Three double crochet. This is all worked into that little ring. Because I'm using that um, DK size three weight yarn to start, I'm trying to keep my hand nice and loose. Like I don't want to really grab my hook. This is another reason it's helpful to use a larger hook than you normally do. Chain two for another corner. Three double crochet. So I'm making sure that the yarn is passing through my fingers without me like stopping it to kind of tighten up the tension. I really just want it to, to flow like a current. Ha ha, there's that word again, current. <laughs> and then the word of the day is current. There's, there's two words of the day, one spelled with a K and one spelled with a T. That's true. Current and current. Mr. In Stitches has just corrected me. That would make current. Current, which is the berry, is the A, ends with an A, A N T, current. Yeah. And current, as in currency or the current of a river, is E N C. So technically two words, but they sound the same. Um, so chain my last current, two. We are discussing current. <laughs> oh, 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 point for Mr. Stitches. Currently, we are discussing current. Maureen, Maureen, currently, we are discussing currents. Yes. Currently, we are discussing currents and currents. <laughs> We are going to chain my last two for the corner, join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three that started, and there is row one of my little itty bitty square starting out. And that, in case you're wondering, is right here. This is where row one of this giant mitered granny square starts. So row one is the middle of the orange square, but it's not down here in the bottom corner. I think that's really kind of neat. So that's row one. Um, I'm going to slip stitch across nice and loosely to the next chain two corner because I'm not reversing rows. So I'm not sort of flipping my square and then working back the other way. I'm just doing what I normally do when I make a granny square um, for speed. But of course, your main granny square, the one that starts it, can be made any way. You can make it any way you're comfortable. Um, it's four rows. So if you're wondering and you move fast and, you know, I'm pausing too much for you and you want to make one with me. Your first granny square, your basic plain granny square is a four row granny. So that's what I'm doing. So I like starting in the corners, chain three, two more double crochet. That's my first shell, chain two. It's my first corner and three more double crochet all into the same corner. So every corner, which is a chain two space for me, gets shell, chain two, shell, and then I chain one before I leave. My new chain one spaces that start in row two and are in every other row going forward are what create the nice little space that helps you jump across that shell as you work along the side of the square. And then once you get to a chain two corner, it's shell, chain two, shell, chain one. So nice plain granny square. You can make them any way you like, whether you want to reverse every row or keep going in the same direction like me, whether you want to use one, two, or three chains in the corners or no chains along the sides. It's up to you. We're having a blast in the chat over here. Oh, good. I'm glad everybody's having a good time in the chat. That is the whole point. We're all playing with words. Well, the English language is just bonkers, isn't it? I mean... <laughs> There are so many words that sound the same, that are spelled differently, or are spelled exactly the same, pronounced differently. It's just. <laughs> Even after I unwound, I see the, the thinner weight, I find that the finer or the thinner weight yarns, they tangle more quickly. Does anybody else find that? Okay, chain one before I close off the row, join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. That is my second row that sits right here. 
coffee sip time. Tell everyone how good my coffee was today. Mr. Insit just wants me to reiterate how good his coffee was today, um, meaning he made the coffee that I am drinking, and it's very good. Yeah, Joey made the coffee, so therefore. Uh, (laughs) It is fantastic. All right. Shell, chain two, shell, chain one. That's my first corner. I'm on row three. Now I've got all these chain one spaces running along the sides of my square. And into every chain one space, I'm working one shell or three double crochet. And then I chain one and I'm into the corner space again. Yes, Mr. and Stitches is an attention speaker. <laughs> It's rounding my third corner, shell, chain two, shell, chain one. And it looks like I've got to unwind some yarn from my great big ball here. So let's get some of that going. Hey, thank you for gifting a membership, Connie. And it looks like Aria won it. Woohoo! Welcome, welcome, everybody who's just joining us today. I hope you are looking forward to a lovely Friday and a lovely weekend beyond. We also have some new Acuna members. Welcome to Vicuña, Deborah. Someone else was a new member. Emily. Emily. Emily's also a new member. Wonderful. Welcome, welcome. Um, after the stream today, we'll make sure that we publish some fun things in the community tab for members and subscribers. So if you're subscribed, make sure you also check out our community tab. <clears throat> excuse me, here on our YouTube channel regularly because we post stuff for everybody members and subscribers and we like to just sort of sum up anything that kind of happened during the stream um if we've got special things that we want to like shout out like links to videos or patterns or coupons or anything else like we've got a promo code for our spring shop we, we're going to include all that in the posts afterwards it's kind of a nice way to sort of sum up the events of the day Yeah, I think it's friends ampersand fans 25 and it gets 25% off of anything in the spring shop. And that's all in capital letters. Friends ampersand fans 25. Yeah, that's the promo code. All right, I'm back to the beginning. I've joined with a slip stitch. That is row three complete. That's where row three fits on our great big mitered granny square. Oh. I keep staring at this and literally salivating. <laughs> I just love all these colors together. Yes, friends and fans 25 or friends ampersand fans 25. Susan says, I don't have a computer, only use an iPad. Can I connect with the community? Great question, Susan. The iPad is a giant pain in our butts. <laughs> App- Apple, anything Apple just refuses to operate with anything else on the planet. Um, but but you can see the community tab. You can tap on it, but you may not be able to see all of the things that come in the community tab. I know they're working on it. YouTube is working really hard to try and get um, the software to play nice with um, the Apple products. But we've heard we don't have an Apple iPad ourselves, but we have heard from people who've got them that um you know you have to want to make sure you update that youtube app re- regularly uh on the apple in fact any device you always re- update your youtube app because they're constantly making changes trying to make things run a little smoother but um you might see text in a tab but you might not see a photograph or you might see text but you won't be able to see a poll 
uh, a link might not work, things like that. Um, you may not even be able to see um, a post at all, or you might see that a post was made, but you can't see the post. I'm not sure how far along they are in fixing that, but I know that that's something they've been working on for quite a while. So um, definitely go to our YouTube channel homepage. Uh, a, you'll see a bunch of little tabs marked videos, live, playlists, community, um, uh, merchandise, I think might be one of them about that. All those little tab things you want to click on community. Um, and the that's the community tab. So when you click on community, all of the the posts that we are able to put up and there's polls and there's photographs and there's um, fun little uh, links. There's um, references to new projects that use old videos. We can post videos there. We can shout out other um, content creators there. Um, quite often Cinnamon Stitches does something uh, with one of our patterns um, in one of her, her little vlog videos. And I love to, to sort of sing those out when I see them. Um, and uh, we're able to kind of interact with people there on the community tab in a different way than we can just sort of in the comment section, because it's sort of more of a... Getting some feedback from that, uh, panel member here. Cameron says, you can see the community tab on iPhone, but not iPad. Okay. And Carolyn says the same. The iPad is blank, but the phone iPhone works. So I guess the softwares are different, even though it's kind of similar. So the iPhone is a go. You can yeah, see the, the community tab. Works. But on the iPad, it does not. Okay, I know they're working on it. Um, I guess it's just frustratingly difficult for them. Yeah, there is a workaround. If you're on the iPad and you go to the website on the browser, not the app, and then you sign in from there, like you're using Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge or whatever, then I think it works. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so I'm going to reiterate what Mr. and Stitches just said. So if you're using, if you've got an iPad or an i, if you've got an iPad and you do not use the YouTube app, but rather go through their um, their browser, their internet browser. So what is the internet browser called? It's not Safari. It's Safari. Yeah. Is it Safari for Apple? So you, you open up Safari, the internet browser, and you go to YouTube like you would if you were on an actual computer. It'll ask you, hey, do you want to use the app? Say no. Um, open up YouTube in the actual Safari internet browser. Go to our channel homepage. Then go to the community tab. And you should be able to see it exactly like you would if you were on a computer, which is everything. Exactly. So that's the workaround. But it's a bit frustrating, but it is. You're a member, you have to be signed in. Yes, and, and now Mr. Institute says if you're a member, you have to make sure that you sign into your YouTube account using the Safari internet browser, just like you would if you were on a computer. You sign in using your the same you know information, the same login and password you would if you had that you used to set up your app, if that's the only place you set it up. So you only you should only have one YouTube account, it doesn't matter how many devices you have. Um, and then you sign in to that account and you can see all your membership stuff. Uh, it's it's cumbersome, but it is a good workaround. I am just working on the fourth row of my basic granny square. That'll be it for the square part of the mitered square <laughs> until we square it up again at the end. So the first four rows, I'm using all one color. Of course, you know, you can you can do every row a different color. That will change the look of it a little bit. I see a comment here from Crochet with Diane. Hi, Jada. Are you working on anything in spe specific? Yeah, so I'm making, I wanted to make an extra large um, mitered granny square to, to do a couple things. One, to answer kind of a couple questions. A lot of people have been asking how to make it bigger, if we could make it bigger, if there's a way to make it bigger. And of course you can make a regular mitered granny square like our original tutorial. You can just keep adding the mitered rows or you can just keep adding, like once you squared up, you can just keep kind of going around and around and around. 
Um, but it keeps changing the look of the square. Like it doesn't, in my opinion, look balanced. So I wanted to make a balanced looking extra large mitered granny square. I also love making little um, lap blankets. Uh, just something that you can toss over your lap if you're sitting on the couch. Um, or if you're just sort of like a little cool, you want to sort of bring something around your shoulders. But I know an awful lot of you lately have mentioned that you're making blankets for uh, folks in old age homes or retired veterans um, or people that are just sort of like in a wheelchair much of the time. And it's nice to have something warm over their laps because um, when you're not moving around much, you get cold, um, even if it's warm outside. So these uh, four of these together with a nice little border makes like a perfect lap gan. So I thought I would put together four, um, stitch them together and add a simple little border and just make just, just, just a pretty, you know, graphically interesting lap gan. Um, so that's the plan. I figured I'd make four of these and um, stitch them together. So today is part one, I guess, of just making the actual extra large granny square. Um, we're going to have <clears throat> a brand new pattern for that available in the shop today. And uh, it'll also be on sale along with our other mitered granny square. So that'll be after the live stream. So if you haven't picked up the other mitered granny square pattern or you're interested in this one, wait till after the stream um, and then pop into the shop. We're going to have them on sale. Just sort of a little anybody who kind of caught the stream today will will uh, will be in on the in on the little special sale and uh, we'll have that kind of up and running for at least 24 hours. Um, and you can pick that up and we'll make sure it's the featured um, thing. So if you pop into our Etsy shop, there's always like some featured listings up top. We'll make sure that they're the top featured listings just so you don't have to go hunting for them. Um, I don't think we have a little scratch mitt pattern, do we? Scratch mitts like for babies? Yeah. No. Um, I actually... What about, what about the really cute little ornament um, mitts? Would those work for a baby or are they too small? Well, no. The, the little... First of all, a scratch mitt shouldn't have a thumb. And it should have kind of a, a very gentle elastic, um, just so it wants to stay on. You don't really want anything that necessarily ties. You want them to be able to stay on. I actually do have a pattern for scratch mitts. <clears throat> I invented it uh, a while ago because I was trying to answer that question myself, but I never got around to um, uh, properly typing it up, and we haven't made a tutorial out of it. But it is on the fine. It is on the list. Uh, and I yes, I do have a tutorial. <laughs> in mind for that and i already have the pattern written up but um uh, at least like handwritten up but we haven't got it all put together properly yet so um i will maybe bump that to the top of the list since i know it's we're in the spring so it's a nice time to make kind of baby related stuff yeah it's also like that's kind of the thing that would be good in, in the make ahead stash like you don't always just want to hand over baby booties you know some scratch mitts are good too okay a little sip of water <clears throat> that is the end of row four um actually if there's any more i could use some more coffee I think I finished it. did you finish it i'm not surprised it was good all right that's row four complete i'm gonna snip my yarn that's it for my orange i'm gonna fasten off and tie it nice and tight and then i like to weave in my tails as i go oh thank you sweetheart i only come out of the well to serve the queen of crochet <laughs> that is my purpose in life thank you I like the look at that. You're getting the best part. Appearing this with is the the, uh, the super flavored the, part. The, the part that has all the the coffee grinds. Yeah. Still in it. <laughs> You're getting fifty percent coffee grinds. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. Oh gosh. All right. So I'm just going to weave in my tail back and forth a few times. I like to kind of weave it in underneath those, those corner stitches. And then if I have a little too much left over, I trim it. I know that it, it's not going to want to come out undone. But if I'm at all concerned because it feels slippery or something, then I'll just keep weaving it in back and forth, back and forth. I might do the whole thing. Yeah, why not? Okay, so... That's the underside, and I've got my tail all woven in nicely. Um, I like to pull out my four corners, just make it look nice and square. That's where I fastened off. So there is my plain, regular granny square. 
Um, in our Etsy shop, I just remembered we also have a tutorial for the heart at the center mitered granny square. So if you like our heart at the center square, we also have a mitered version of that too. Um, I'll also include that in the sale after the live stream today. And I'll make sure that's a featured listing too. I know a lot of you may not have seen that, um, but it's it's a, an easy one to do. If you need help, like visually, we don't have a specific tutorial for it, but um, the first three rows of our heart at the center granny square will answer how to do the heart part or the little kind of square part. And then the regular mitered granny square tutorial or even today's tutorial will help you figure out how to do the rest of it. So they operate exactly the same way. Um, it's just that the little picture in the bottom corner changes. So that is our square. Now we're gonna start with the fun mitered bit. This was a size three DK weight yarn. So I had to try and keep my tension kind of loosey goosey. And now I'm going to switch to my green. I've got a little bit left over. I wonder if I can get the whole thing done in this. Um, I'll have better information on how much yarn is required per section um, towards the end. I know, for example, that this is around 16 yards of yarn. I'm probably overestimating that just to be safe because I want my tension to be loose and that takes up a little extra yarn. So that's around 16 yards. This is around 16 and a half yards because this is almost the same number of of shells um, that are in the main square. It's just that you're going back and forth only, you're only doing two sides. Um, so that's about 16. So 16 yards, around 16 and a half yards, around 18 to 20 yards uh, for this section. And this is around 22 yards and then 22 yards again for the outside section. So the last time I did math on a live stream, I absolutely royally messed up my, my numbers. <laughs> Um, so let me just, let me do this uh, properly here. I don't have a calculator, but I am not quite so tired and I am coffeeed up. So I should be able to do this without making any mistakes. Let's do a little bit of math, shall we? All right. <clears throat> so 16 yards, 16 and a half yards. What did I say? About 18 to 22. So I'm going to say 19 yards on the safe side, 22 and then 22 again. So we've got the 0. 0.5 down here. Uh, it's 12, 14, 16, uh, and nine is 25. I'll carry the two, two, four, six, eight, nine. So 95 and a half yards roughly required for an extra large mitered granny square. Now that's total. I also gave you the individual um, sections. Um, and each of these sections are four rows, except for the border, which is two rows. And you can make this with scraps. So obviously, 95 and a half yards sounds like a lot, <clears throat> excuse me. But if this is only 16 yards, then you can bust out your scraps and have fun just, you know, filling in those little sections with just some smaller amounts of yarn. They also don't all have to match. But I do think that the mitered granny square pattern is at its boldest and most dramatic when all of the squares are roughly identical um, because then you can have them sort of sitting nose to nose or all the squares kind of in the corner one two three four and then and then that nifty mitered effect kind of corners out from each uh, point that's going to be my plan with this blanket uh, but we will get there so here we go I'm going to build directly onto the square that I've already started I'm going to start doesn't really matter what corner I start in for this row this is row five um, somebody asked me the other day, actually somebody has asked, I can't remember her name, but she's asked multiple times on multiple <laughs> granny square tutorials why I don't use a standing double crochet stitch when I join my yarn. Um, the easy answer to that was habit. I always make a slip stitch, join with a slip stitch or slip knot, join with a slip stitch, chain three, which counts double crochet and then continue. Um, I just wasn't in the habit of making a standing double crochet. But for those of you who are interested in what that looks like, it's basically like joining your yarn with a standing single crochet or just joining with a single crochet. So you make a slip knot on your hook and you figure out where it is you're going to join your yarn. So that's going to be right there. And for me, I find it helpful if I hold the tail of my joining yarn. So I just kind of put my thumb on it. Pretend that my hook is already attached to my work. Yarn over go through the space where I'm joining my yarn, just like I would if I was already attached to my work, pick up a loop, 
So now you've got your three loops on your hook, just like you would if this was a regular old double crochet, but you see I've got my thumb still on that little short tail. That's just to keep it in control. Yarn over, back through two, yarn over, back through two, regular old double crochet. And now the top of your double crochet is, you're, you're sort of already at the top where all the rest of your stitches are gonna sit. The only problem I have with this is that my little tail is way up here. So when I go to weave it in, I have to kind of weave it down the back. It's not that big a deal. It's just not what I'm used to. Uh, but it does make joining the row a little neater, and I will demonstrate that when I get back to it. So that's joining your yarn with a standing double crochet. You can use that in lieu of joining your yarn with a slip stitch and chaining three to start. Uh, plus, it's also a double crochet. So some people might like that it's all double crochets and that it all looks the same. And there you go. It's all three double crochets and your little yarn tails up here. So standing double crochet can literally stand in <laughs> for a chain three. <laughs> Um, I like to, usually I would finish my corner with uh, chain two, three double crochet, chain one, but because we are now moving on to the mitered part of the, the project, that's it. This corner where I joined my yarn only gets one shell. I still chain one before I leave. Uh, and now it's kind of like I'm using the regular crochet pattern. I'm double crocheting three times into every chain one space. So shell, chain one, <clears throat> excuse me, shell, chain one, all the way across to the corner. Chain one, when I get to the next corner, <clears throat> there is actually a corner in this. So we only work one shell, chain two, shell, chain one in the mitered section of the square. So you're really only going around one corner. You're using three corners on the original granny square, but you're only actually creating one new corner. So I work a shell, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, chain one, and then I'm going to finish shell, chain one, shell, chain one, shell, chain one into these chain one spaces across the second side until I get to this corner. And I'm still going to put a shell in it, but that's it. So there's only one new corner created, which is another reason I kind of like this square pattern. It, 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 I feel almost like it moves a little faster than a regular granny square, but that could just be could just be all in my imagination. I'm not sure. <laughs> so there we go. There's the new corner. I've got a shell chain one in every single space. I get to the third corner and I work three double crochet or a shell. And that is it for that row. So pull up my loop. <clears throat> Here's where I am. So that is my first row complete. And it might look like it's, it's it, things kind of get pulled out a little bit where, as you work. So even if you look a little bit tight um, against your first granny square when you start, as it gets bigger and that weight of the yarn is kind of pulling on the whole overall square, it will stretch itself out. So don't worry too much if your tension looks like it's a little bit off from one square to the next. Uh, that's what blocking is for. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> pardon me. Huh. All right, that is row five. Pretty straightforward. Here's where people get sometimes confused with the whole mitered pattern. Uh, but in this case, I think this is kind of the fun part. We chain three to begin the new row, just like you would if you were, you know, starting a new row in any regular granny square. But now we flip. So now we're going to go work back across that nice row of green that I just added. So across row five, we're working backwards. And from here on out, this is kind of a neat thing. Your even odd rows. So every two rows after you leave your regular granny square, you've got 
an even row and an odd row, or you know, row, I should say an odd row and an even row. So you have row five, row six, and then row seven, row eight, row nine, row 10, and so on. Your even row um, in row five will be 10 shells long. So you've got five across each side. You're only working across two sides of your square. But because of the way your even row works, you start with a post, you end with a post. I'll explain more of that in a second. You have the same number of shells, but with just two extra double crochets in that row. So it you're going to have 10 shells in row five and row six, 12 shells in row seven and row eight, 14 shells in row nine and row 10, and so on. It's kind of a strange little thing that happens, but this is why. It, <laughs> this is why. <laughs> So we chain three, that chain three counts as a double crochet. And that's all we do to start our odd rows. You turn your work and then you're immediately looking for the next chain one space, which is all the way over here. So you hop over top of that previous shell and then you just go back to the usual pattern. Three double crochet, chain one in every single chain one space or shell chain one. And that little chain three that you started the row with becomes a post. And it helps to keep a flat edge running up the side of your square. So don't worry if it looks a bit bulky when you get your first one down, because that's the whole point of squaring up the square. You can see that when we run that lovely border all the way up, it all of that, any of that funny little bulging or oddness disappears completely. So you can see that that's nice and flat all the way up. And we're, we're going to end up working shells around these posts. So these posts are very important. Chain three, you don't need an extra chain one because it's going to stretch out. And we actually want these spaces to be uh, not extra large. So chain three is all you need. Turn and then work the regular pattern. Shell, chain one, shell, chain one, shell, chain one, all the way across until you get to the corner. Into the corner, it's just like any other granny square corner. Shell, chain two for the corner space. Shell, chain one. So three double crochet, chain two. Three double crochet. And chain one. That creates your corner. We're only making one corner as we work the rest of this mitered square. So that's kind of a cool thing. And then for the rest of that row, it's just shell, chain one, or three double crochet, chain one, until we get to the end. Welcome, welcome, everybody. If you're just catching, catching up with us, we are working on an extra large mitered granny square today. I've got half an eyeball on the chat. I'm kind of paying attention to what I'm doing, but every once in a while, I'm able to sort of look over and see see friendly faces and names so hello everyone when you get to the end of an even row you're going to work your last shell chain one and that puts you with a shell at the end so that's the shell that ended your last row you want to skip over it and into the top of that standing double crochet or chain three whatever you've got there you're going to double crochet so you start with a post you end with a post and this is why you still have the same number of shells in the even row as you did in the preceding odd row. So the shells are just sort of like in one, but you've got a post or a double crochet or a chain three that begins and ends that row. So this ends with a double crochet, but over here we started with a chain three. And that is the odd row. That's the only tricky part to this pattern. It's the only part that kind of trips people up typically because they get to the end and they're not sure how to end the row. When you finish with a post, it's just like every row starts with a chain three, you turn your work, but now you wanna mimic what's below you from the preceding odd row. Well, that's a shell. So right into that chain one space that's sitting right below where you chain three, you just finish the shell. So you treat that chain three at the beginning, the beginning of an even row as the start of a shell. Work two more double crochet into that space, chain one and off you go. So you've got um, an alternating pattern of a row beginning with a shell, 
and then a row beginning with a post, and then a row beginning with a shell, and then a row beginning with a post. But the, the rest of those rows are absolutely identical. Every chain one space gets a shell, chain one, and the only corner you're worrying about is a typical shell, chain two, shell, chain one. And that's it. Uh, once you kind of get comfortable with that, just like any other granny square pattern, it's sort of, you sort of settle into a, a little rhythm and you don't, you won't make any mistakes because you've got sort of a visual cue when you get up to the end. If the, the row preceding ended with a shell, you know you have to end with a post. If the row preceding ended with a post, you know you have to end with a shell. Uh, but there'll also be a chain one space there prompting you to do that. What have I got here? Little, little knot. No problem. A lot of people are liking the color combination, claiming it look, kind of looks like retro. Yeah. A retro, look a retro color combination. I agree, everybody. I like it too. I guess it's that orange, you know, there's just something about orange. Orange really comes into vogue and then goes out again, but I love orange. It's one of my favorite colors. Vima, hi Vima. Have you ever used uh, or made a granny square with roving yarn? I've got roving. Um, it's just a really kind of bulky yarn, but I find with at least the roving yarn I've had that it it it's not spun. It's just sort of like it's not twisted, so it's not strong. Um, the, the trick with roving yarn is you have to be kind of careful with it because if you pull on it or you make anything too big um, that has like pressure points anywhere, the roving yarn tends to just want to pull apart. At least that's what I've noticed. Um, I'd love if anybody wants to comment on their experiences with roving yarn. It's really pretty soft, fluffy stuff, but it doesn't stand up to a lot. So I haven't made blankets with roving yarn because blankets tend to be large and heavy and I feel like that's just too much weight pulling on an otherwise like too easy to pull apart kind of yarn. Uh, maybe it's just the roving that I've used. I'm not sure. <laughs> so my row starts with a shell. It ends with a shell because there was a little space right before I get to my post. I work three double crochet into it. That's the end of the row. And I've got one more row in this color to do. So I chain three, turn. Because this row here ended with a shell, I know that my new row has to start with a post or just a chain three. And then I'm immediately looking for the next chain one space, which is way over here. I have to hop over that shell, which means I have to work three double crochet, chain one into it. And that's all I need to remember. And then I'm off to the races again. Joanna says she's never heard of roving yarn. Um, Joanna, just give a give it a quick look on um, Google. Just Google roving, R-O-V-I-N-G, I think is the way it's spelled, roving. I'm not sure. Um, but just, yeah, like uh, give it a quick look. You'll see, and, and go to Google Images and you'll see like a whole bunch of just images of roving yarn. It's, it's, it's lovely stuff. But like I said, I, I wouldn't make a blanket out of it. I'm just running out of my green. So I'm going to tie in this. Second ball, slightly different green color, but I don't care. Using up my scraps. This is another ball of yarn I think I've had in my collection for, oh, I don't know, 20, 20 plus years. <laughs> That's another reason this probably looks like a retro uh, color scheme is because I'm actually using retro yarn. A lot of this yarn is like 20 years old. Let's see here. There's my corner, shell chain two, shell chain one. And then I'm just gonna finish this row and that'll be it for my green. Uh, Diane says she can't find more of the yarn. She's making a matching scarf for the split shell hat. That is so frustrating. <laughs> um, I will say this, this is a fun little design tip. If anybody runs into this problem, you're making a set, maybe a hat and a matching pair of gloves or a hat and a matching scarf. And you find yourself running out of yarn partway through the second project, whatever it is. So let's say you made the hat and now you're working on the scarf and you realize you're not going to have enough yarn. A really simple thing to do 
is to, um, if you've made the hat first and it's the scarf you've got to do, go find another ball of yarn, same fiber, same weight category, that's a really pretty contrasting color, and stripe the scarf. Stripe it. So make a stripe of the original color and a, and a stripe either bigger or the same size with the new color, depends on how much yarn you need. Then go back to your hat and you can add a simple little edging in the contrasting color, like a one row of single crochet. If it's the kind of hat that can use a, a toggle, like a, like a little uh, pom pom or a ball pom or a spring or something cute like that, you can make a, a little toggle, a doodad for the top of the hat in the contrasting color. You can make an applique in the contrasting color. You can make a flower in the contrasting color and put one on both things, so the hat or the scarf. Either way, what you're doing is you're tying in that second required contrasting color and you've made it look like it was intentional. <laughs> Works every time. <laughs> Just about to finish my fourth row of this color. So I get to the end. I see that I'm coming up on the row that preceded finished with a shell, which means I need to finish this row with a chain one and a post. So I find the top of the chain three, double crochet into it, and that completes my first mitered stripe of color, but the fourth row of that mitered work. So I've got four rows in my original granny square. Rows five, six, seven, and eight of the mitered square pattern are now complete. I'm gonna fasten off that green or my B color, and then I'm gonna weave in my tails and I'm gonna move on to the next section. What's the uh, size of that? This square is 16 inches. It is a doozy. So it's an extra large. By 16 by 16. Yeah. So a square is always the same size, whether you're measuring it uh, across, along the edges. Um, so this is a 16 inch square. It's an extra large square and it will make making a blanket very fast work. <laughs> Yep, this was a, an answer to people who wanted to make a, a much larger uh, mitered square, but weren't really sure how to go about making the original mitered square, which is like six to eight inches, depending on the yarn and hook size you've used, how to make it sort of size up without it looking awkward. I love a balanced look. And in this case, I'm using the, 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 the law of twos. So I've got a four row granny square to start. I'm mirroring it with each stripe in four rows of the new color. And then when I get to the border, I'm giving it two rows. So the border is like, is half the size of the, um, the original row, like the rule of two. So this is four, this is four, four, four. I, I'm sort of using the, the double of two to make a nice thick stripe color. But then I want my border to not be as thick as the rest of my colors because it's not really... Um, what I'm trying to draw attention to. So I want to make it sort of half the size. So if I start with two, um, that allows me to size up my square to a 16 inch square versus say only using two rows for my miniature, my main square, and then two rows of each color for the striping, and then one row of the original border color, which is how we built the first mitered granny square. So I just doubled everything and um, it balances up like it scales up and there's a nice balance to the the size of the stripes and the color. Um, I love this. I love I love super small things and I love super big things. <laughs> should should have a swig of my coffee before it gets cold here. Just wanted to weave in my tails. And then I'll have a swig of coffee and then I will start with color C. There we go. So I had to use a little bit of an extra green color, but I don't mind. I think that looks 
just fine. I love I love scrap blankets when there's just a little bit of a difference in the color. Because to me, this is such a, a, a close change. It almost looks like I'm using self-striping yarn, like one of those ombre effects. So it <laughs> doesn't bother me. Oh, good coffee. Okay. Let's move on to the current color. Oh, <laughs> current, current, current is the current color. Well played. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put that over there. That gives me a little bit better of a feed. Now, I'm switching from uh, using acrylic to using 100% wool. So like I said at the beginning of the, the live stream, if you're going to mix up fibers, keep that in mind. And if you're giving it away, make sure you send instructions with the project. I don't usually recommend mixing fibers if you're making something for someone else. But if you're just using up what you've got in your stash for your own purposes, then mixing fibers is okay. So long as you remember that you have to treat your entire blanket as the most fragile or the most special yarn that's in it. So in this case, the wool needs to be treated differently than I would normally treat acrylic. Acrylic, you can be kind of rough with, but wool, you can't wash it in a really vigorous washing machine cycle. You can't use hot water, it'll shrink. So I will either hand wash in lukewarm to cool water or super gentle cycle in the washing machine, cool water, and then lay flat to dry. So no, no drying machine for me. Oh, well, good. I'm, I'm excited to hear that. The miter cranny square is such a cool visual effect. I just love it. And you can really change how it looks depending on how you use colors if you use colors at all, imagine your main square and then all of this just one color and then a border. Like that changes it again. Then you really get into that 1960s mod kind of look. Um, you can have so much fun with this shape. I just love it. Granny squares are awesome. <laughs> um, okay. This is my row. What am I on here? Row nine I'm starting. Row nine is an odd row. My previous row ended with a post, which means that my next row needs to start with a shell. So I'm going to start in the chain one space. I'm going to join my yarn like I normally do. So you can use a standing double crochet if you want. But since most of my rows start with a chain three, I kind of like the consistency. So I'm going to start with a slip stitch, chain three. That starts my row. Chain three counts as a double crochet. I finish that first shell with two more double crochets. There we go. And I'm off to the races. Chain one and shell, chain one, shell, chain one, all the way across. I'll weave in that little tail later. Uh, my wool yarn, while being slightly thinner in weight than my two or my, my previous acrylic, kind of wool has a springy consistency to it. So it tends to act bigger than it is. So I need to remember that even though it feels a little thinner, I don't want to be too loose with my tension like I am with my size three or my lighter weight yarn down here because wool has this expansive spring and it will sort of size itself up. It'll kind of bully the other yarn in my yarn, my, in my square here, if I don't keep a regular tension like I used for the preceding yarn. So even though this is skinnier than this acrylic, the wool has more spring and bounce, and I, I'm going to use that to my advantage. I'm not going to be too loose with my tension, but I'm going to try and keep it about the same as I did with this yarn so that the shells wind up being roughly the same size. But, you know, a little bit of variance is okay. Yes, I am feeding Mr. and Stitches down the well. He gets he gets regular uh, chocolate drops. <laughs> it's pretty cozy down there. He likes it. I've set it up pretty good. Yeah, it's like a man cave. It's a man cave, but it's a 
Manuel. It's a Manuel. <laughs> Manuel. Not right. A manhole. <laughs> a manhole. <laughs> so I've turned my corner. I only have the one corner to worry about in the mitered section of the square. Shell, chain two, shell, chain one. And then just shell, chain one. So it's the same alternating pattern of a rose that begin and end with a shell, and then rows that begin and end with a post. And everything in between is the same. If it's a chain one space, it gets three double crochet chain one. If it's the only chain two corner in the mitered section, it gets three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, chain one. And then once you get comfortable with it, you can kind of start moving pretty quickly. Again, I've come to the end of the row. I see that the row before me ended with or started in this case with a chain three or a post. So that means that I need to finish this row with a shell. So I find that space just before the post. I work three double crochet into it, and that's the end of the even row. Even rows begin and end with a shell. Odd rows begin and end with a post. So that's the first row or row nine of that stripe of color. Chain three, turn. Because this row finished with a shell, this row needs to start with just a post. So I chain three and then I immediately look for the next space, which is over top of that big shell. So three double crochet, chain one into it, and that starts that row with a post. And that's my space that I will work a shell into on the way back for the next row. I agree, Tracy, this does make a nice baby blanket. Um, just four of them together would make a nice large baby blanket, even like a play mat that you could get down on the ground on. And I see Kathy's mentioned having like a wool allergy. Um, there are lots of really nice natural fibers out there. So you're if you've got an alert allergy to like sheep wool, it's not necessarily likely that you have an allergy to say alpaca or um, uh, what are those little fluffy rabbits called uh, angora you might not have a problem with angora uh, but if you do have a problem with animal fibers in general um, then you probably also are allergic to like cats and dogs and stuff like that uh, I know I know some people who are sensitive just to animal fibers in general are just sensitive to all animals um, but you can try uh, linen you can try bamboo um, and you can try cotton. So those are also natural fibers, but they are plant-based as opposed to animal-based. Um, and they're also really nice. In fact, linen is just, linen and bamboo are lovely yarns to work with. Very smooth. If you're just joining us, welcome. I hope uh, Friday is treating you well. I hope you're looking forward to a lovely weekend. We are making an extra large miter granny square today. And if you just want some company, feel free to uh, pull up a chair, put your feet up, grab a beverage, and uh, hang out in the live chat with all the other absolutely wonderful people that are in there chit-chatting. We've got probably the nicest community on the planet. Everybody is so supportive and friendly and creative and fun. Everybody's got such a good sense of humor. I'm finishing my 10th row. The row preceding ended or began with a shell, which means that this row, my even row, needs to end with a post. So I double crochet into the top of the chain three that began that previous row. And that is row 10 complete. And I'm just going to keep going. Chain three, turn. I need to start with a shell, so that chain three counts as a double crochet. I work two more double crochet into that immediate chain one space, and that's the shell, chain one. It now matches the row two before, so the odd rows start and end with a shell, even rows start and end with a post, making sure that there's just this repetition. So if you're ever confused, just stop and go, okay, 
Where am I? That's a shell. This had to have been a post. This is a shell. This had to have been a post. That's a shell. This had to have been a post, and so on. And then the rest of the square is the same. Kels asks, how do you stop cramps in your hands? I get those too. Um, I suffer from rheumatoid uh, arthritis and there's any number of reasons why people might suffer from cramps. You could actually just be a completely normal, healthy, regular human being and still get cramps in your hands because um, our muscles cramp up. So for whatever reason, your muscles might be cramping up in your hands. Immediately stop. <laughs> If you're starting to feel a cramp or a pain, immediately stop, put it down. And then I like to go through just a little gentle bit of exercise. So I'll gently sort of grab my thumb from the, the one hand like a chicken leg and just gently squeeze, kind of like pressing my hands. So my, my fingers are kind of pulling the skin on the inside of my hand down, just gently squeeze that chicken leg of a thumb very very gently you know if this is the hand that's cramping maybe start with that one then i switch and i do the other hand very very carefully if you've got any kind of tendon pain or swelling like i am i don't know if you can see it but i'm very swollen right here right now my wrists are what give me the biggest problem i gently squeeze that thumb then i gently squeeze my index finger on the opposite hand, I kind of start at the, the knuckle and gently squeeze and pull isn't the right word, but almost pull a little bit on that finger. I do the other one. I will go through all of my fingers like this, just gently squeezing. If one finger is a little sore than another, I'll pause and maybe give it a little more attention. Remembering to kind of Try and drop my shoulders. I tend to tighten up my shoulders. So I remember, take a break, take a breath, take a glass of water, drop the tension out of my shoulders. I'm pulling and squeezing very, very gently, very, very mildly. If you've got problems in your knuckles, be very careful in those areas. You don't want to cause more trouble. But squeezing the flesh around your joints and your bones helps your blood circulate and it feels good. It helps if you've got circulatory issues. It helps if you've got swelling issues in the joints like I do. And I just take a moment, even if this takes me five to 10 minutes to do every single finger, doesn't matter. I just take a break. We have a good question from Paula. Yeah. you see the question there about when you finish a row and need to turn, does it matter which way you turn? Great question, Paula. No, it does not. You turn, uh, whether you turn to the left or the right. So for example, if I'm turning, I can spin it one way or I can spin it the other way. It doesn't matter so long as you're just now working back across the other side. So whether you spin towards you or spin away from you, I guess that would be counterclockwise or clockwise, doesn't matter. Um, you just remember you want your yarn to always be, you know, ready to work. So whether you go this way or if you go this way, it really doesn't make any difference. So great question. Um, and it doesn't really matter if you change from one row to the next. I know some people might say, oh, yeah, it does. You know, the, your chain three is going to twist one way and then twist the other. But in this case, um, most of your chain three posts, in fact, all of your post rows, the posts are going to be hidden by your border. So it does not matter. This is one of those nice, flexible, easygoing patterns. I'm just finishing with the squeezing of my hands. So I just, you know, gently grab the whole hand and squeeze. And then I do, I do a little bit of stretching, just the gentlest bit of stretching. If, if I'm starting to feel a little looser, I'll stretch a little harder. So I like to kind of press my fingers together. Depending on the day, this might really hurt. Today, this actually feels really good. And I'll do all of them. I'll try to put my wrists together and bend my fingers out. And then back. Again, you only do what you can. Make fists 
and then stretch your fingers out as far as they'll go and then make a fist. When you make a fist, put your thumb over top of your fingers and pull your finger down gently. But this is how you make a fist. And that goes for <laughs> if you have to raise your hand in violence. <laughs> Never ever make a fist with your thumb on the inside because you'll break your own thumb if you actually hit something. So always make a fist with your thumb on the outside, whether you're stretching or you need to defend yourself. <laughs> Thumbs go on the outside of your hands. That nice tight fist and then stretch your hands out again. Maybe bend your wrists, rotate your wrists. Again, if this is a pain point, be very, very careful. You know your own body better than anybody, so pay attention to it. Then, uh, if you're starting to feel a little better, if that cramp's going away, very slowly return to crochet. Don't go right back with the same speed and the same strength because that might just cause the cramp all over again. I suffer from Charlie horses in my feet like constantly. Um, so I'll have to get up and stand up and walk around. Sometimes I'll be two in the morning. It's really annoying. Um, but I can't just go lie back down again or stretch out a foot because it'll cause the Charlie horse to come back. It's the same thing with cramping. You don't want to just jump right back into the same activity that you were doing, in this case, crochet, because it might trigger that cramp again. So just take a moment, check in with the rest of your body. Make sure you're not holding any parts of your body really, really tense. Have a sip of water, maybe stand up and walk around a little bit. That sometimes helps me. And then very slowly go back to crocheting and then gradually speed up. I am still sipping my coffee. It's the never ending cup of coffee. Um, and I hope that helps with your cramps. It certainly does with me. I see people mentioning uh, different creams and things. I don't actually use any. Um, not that I haven't tried them. It's just that I'm such a busy person that I don't like anything that doesn't immediately absorb into my skin and I cannot stand anything with a smell. I just can't. <laughs> um, so I don't usually go for topical creams because I don't want to have that sort of rubbed all over my clothing or the rest of the house. Um, but I have seen people mention a few. So they can definitely be helpful. I did have, um, I used one, I can't remember the name of it. It was sort of a um a natural plant-based one i can't i bet you somebody out there knows what it is it's a pretty yellow flower i can't think of the name of it um but i did use it uh, from time to time and it's nice but it doesn't fully absorb as quickly as i need it to if at all so i can only kind of use them uh at a time when I'm not doing anything else and I can just sort of sit there with it on me for a while and then I've got to go wash it off. So I don't know if that if that's going to do its best job on me if I have to like wash it off before I go and do something. But Jackie says apple cider vinegar gummies help oh. with cramps. Apple cider vinegar gummies. Those just sound delicious. I've never seen apple cider vinegar. I love apple cider vinegar. I use it for a lot of things, uh, not the least of which it makes a delicious salad dressing. Um, I've never seen apple cider vinegar gummies. That's so cool. I've been known to do a shot of apple cider vinegar because I know it's good for me, even though like the faces I make after I have it are pretty impressive. So this is row 12 of my little, my big, my extra large granny square here. Row 12, this is the last row of my third color. And then I'll be on to row 13 and my fourth color. I've been stopping, you know, and taking breaks and sort of chatting with everybody and, you know, answering questions. So this is taking a little longer than it normally would, but um, depending on how fast you crochet, because we all crochet at different speeds, um, I can make one of these a full 16 inch miter granny square. So the big one sitting on the table in front of us, I can make one of those in under an hour. Um, and that's if I'm warmed up, I don't have any problems, no pain or anything. And I'm not, you know, having to put my hook down and 
go off and do stuff. You can get them from Amazon. Really? Apple cider, apple cider vinegar gummies. Apple cider vinegar gummies. Available on Amazon, apparently. Well, I'll have to take a look. Kind of like, they, it looks like they come in a, like a vitamin. They're kind of like treated like a, a vitamin or a um, you know, like those um, fish oil? Yeah, yeah. Like a mineral or a vitamin or something. Yeah, they kind of look like that. I get it. That's cool. Okay, so that is the end of row 12. That is the end of my current, ha ha ha, current color. That's the word of the day. It's the word of the day. And now I'm just going to take a moment and weave in my tails. Sometimes I do this at the end, but when I'm changing colors a lot in a project, like so an extra large granny square, I find it helpful to do my tails as I finish each section so that I don't miss any. The more color changes I have in a project, the more I'm dropping a color or snipping yarn and fastening off, the more likely I am to miss weaving in a tail uh, if I leave them all to the end. So I like to do them as I go. Okay, so here we go. We are currently, oh, this is so pretty. Rows, one, two, three, four, or we can count this way. This is each shell running up the side of your granny square, tells you the row you're on. One, two, three, four, that's four rows, five, Six on the post, seven, eight on the post, that's eight rows, nine, 10, 11, 12. I've just finished 12 rows. I've got another five rows to go, four of which are going to be in the new gray color. Now, I used a three weight gray for my previous square. I'm about to dive into a four weight, a very fluffy four weight. Look at this mess. Look at this gigantic mess. Ah. <sighs> I don't know why some balls of yarn just insist on falling apart, but I am going to make the best of it here. <laughs> Everyone's digging into the word trick. Maureen says, her Alexa says that there are 12 official definitions of the word current. 12 official definitions of the word current. I can believe it. Well, but. Current. But that would be current ENT, right? Uh, probably ENT. As opposed to A N T, current. Yeah, I think current is the name of the, the berry. Yeah, current is the name of the berry, and hence the color. I'm guessing the berry was named first, and then the color was named after the berry. But I suppose it could be the other way around. All right. That's kind of the color they are. The one you have in your hand, they're a little darker than that. Yeah, I'm joining my yarn with a slip stitch, chaining three to begin, and I'm off to the races. So this row is an even row it needs to or i should say it's an odd row and the odd row starts with a shell and ends with a shell the even rows start and end with a post Our connection. Let's see. Can everyone see and hear us still? Can oh, are we having a connection problem? I can still see it myself. Is anybody else having a can like is does the stream look funny to anybody? We're double checking. Yep, we're good to go. Oh, okay. All right, then um but, uh, Joanna is having trouble on current. Yeah, Joanna, it might be a problem on your end. Um, just reload the 
refresh the video. Yeah, refresh the video. That that should take care of it. Jessica Rabbit says it went black and started buffering. Refreshing helped. Oh, okay. Yeah, depending on where you are, you know, the uh, the internet isn't the same for everybody everywhere all the time. So I am. I would like to shout out a big shout out to those that are watching us while at work. Oh, yes. Shout out to everybody who's at work and watching and or listening. You could just be listening. This could technically be like a radio program. Nothing wrong with that. If uh, if your job is the kind of job where you're sort of doing something that doesn't necessarily require you to, um, I'm not going to say pay attention. All of our jobs need us to pay attention. But if it's just sort of like that, one of those repetitious things that you're doing or that you're so familiar with it, like you've got body memory, it's really nice to be able to sit and listen to something, you know, to keep kind of keep keep another part of your brain engaged or active while you're you're busy doing your job. I think we've probably all had work like that at some point. Katie says she's listening while she drives. Thank you. I hope I hope you're able to concentrate on the road. <laughs> uh, yes, Crocus Connections. Can you repeat about which row starts with a post? So, um, I'm basing everything on two or an even amount of rows. So my main square was four rows, which means my first mitered row is a row five or an odd row. Um, if you had a different number of rows, an, an odd number of rows, for example, in your main square, regardless, the first row of mitered work begins with a shell and then it becomes a post and then a shell and then a post. And that's how you know where you are because the, the row of, of mitered work always starts, the first row starts with a shell and then the next row will be a post and then a shell and then a post. Now, because I've gone with an even number of rows, four in my main square, that means every odd row of miter begins with a begins and ends with a shell and every even row of miter begins and ends with a post. And then it just alternates. Um, so it all depends on how many rows are in your first square. That first row of miter, whether it's even or odd, will always start with a, a shell and then the next row will be a post. So if that happened to be an even row for you, then it would still be shell first, then post, shell first, then post. But because of how I did, did my first square, because of the scaling I wanted in the rest of my blanket, the odd rows start and end with a shell, the even rows start and end with a post. I hope that explains that a little. Somebody thought that the gray I'm using looks like a blue. It might be just the lighting in here, but this is definitely uh, a gray that I'm using. It's a charcoal. Uh, both the grays are kind of a charcoal gray. Yeah, I'm I'm sort of looking at it too. My my current on the yeah, this does look this looks on the on the screen, this looks bluish, but it's very gray. This looks more red, but it's much more of current. So think like um like a, a very light colored wine, like it's a current color, not so much red. Um the green's pretty close and the orange is pretty close. Um uh, actually on the camera this orange is even brighter and more cheerful, but um it's very creamsicle orange, creamsicle orange colored. So yeah, this does look kind of blue, but it's actually gray. Uh, yeah, anyone that's having issues with the screen, just leave, uh, leave the video and then come back. Yeah, anybody having problems with the stream, just either click the refresh button at the top or just back out and then and then reload it again. And that should fix it. 
because it's probably just sort of a little interruption in your squirrels. it's the squirrels the, they're, uh, they're the squirrels get into everybody's internet <laughs> and i am starting to find little oh no there i fixed that again I'm going to use up this gray and then I'm going to work out, I'm going to rewind it after the stream because I don't know why it fell apart as much as it did, but I'm kind of crocheting as I, as I unwrap, un untangle it. on our end we might be get, we might be getting a bit of a slowdown here yeah uh we might i mean you know canadian infrastructure is at its best Garbage. a laugh <laughs> at its best it's terrible yeah at its best it's it's just barely passable and at its worst it's well it's it's not it's not really existent so it could definitely be on our end everybody Hey, all right. Welcome back to crochet, Kara. You can do it. You know, it's 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 kind of like anything. Everything in life goes in cycles, and the cycles or circles are all different sizes. Some of them are small, some of them are big. You know, you might start crochet as a teenager and then come back to it in your 60s. You might only leave it for short bursts. It's like anything, you know, you might get on a run of, I love the color pink, and then I can't stand the color pink, and then I love the color pink. And it's like, you know, there's 20 years in between each of those statements. It's, uh, it's everything kind of goes in cycles. And for a multitude of reasons, you know, like it could be, you might not do something like cycling, let's say, for a long time, because you, you know, just don't feel like it. You're not, in, you don't live in a place where you can really cycle all that easily. Maybe you've got physical limitations that stop you from cycling. Maybe you just got bored of it. You don't have time for it. And then like you move or you, you know, you start to feel better or whatever. And then you get back into cycling. And so everything kind of comes in cycles. I think the stuff that we like, we always kind of come back to somehow, some way. So if you love like crochet, if you loved it once, you'll probably love it again. Uh, you know, and, and the, the time in between wanting to pick up your hook might be long, it might be short, but you know, eventually you'll pick up that hook again. This is an interesting little knot. I'm trying to make sure that I don't accidentally yank it into a worst i mean look at this look look at this this is the ultimate yarn barf i don't even know where it started i don't know i i don't know what's what it's like i, I have no idea i'm just trying to to <laughs> nibble at it as i go here Welcome, welcome. If you're just joining us, I see a question here. Um, is that a granny square worked only from two sides? This is this is a mitered granny square. Uh, we do have a tutorial on it, uh, on the original smaller version of it. We wanted to make a big one. When you're working the corner part or the mitered part, you're only working back and forth across two sides of the original square. So you start with a square, a regular granny square, then you start only working two sides. So in every every row, when you're working the mitered part, you only actually have one corner to contend with. And you go back and forth and you turn at the end of every row, you go back and forth, and then you, you're able to kind of grow your square out in square out in one going in one direction. And then you put a border on. And of course, you can use that square with that main square any way you like. You know, you like it this way, maybe you like it up here. And you don't have to change the way you make the square. You just change the way you, you end up sort of 
stitching it into a project or the way you use it. Um, I love them. I, I love it. It's such a fun, bold, graphic, you know, style. Gina, have you ever gone through gaps without crocheting? Have I ever gone through gaps without crocheting? Yes. Yes. Um, I learned how to crochet. I taught myself how to crochet as a teenager uh, after I learned how to knit. And I, well, I liked it, but I had other things on my brain as a teenager. I was more into trying to sew because I felt that that was quicker. Um, and I really liked knitting. I kind of got into the habit of knitting and ah, I was trying embroidery. I was trying tatting. I kind of tried everything as a teenager. Uh, went off to school for university. My friend Teresa taught me how to make a granny square one day. And I fell in love with crochet all over again. Um, but I didn't jump right back in. I was kind of obsessed with knitting mittens. I went through a phase where I knit mittens like no one had ever made mittens before. I just loved it. I couldn't make enough mittens. Everybody was getting mittens for Christmas. Um, I absolutely love knitting mittens. And I liked knitting in the round on, on double pointed needles. Um, that's kind of my favorite way to knit. So I was really doing that for a while. And then um, I got a job. I found myself with lunch hours and no one to kind of talk to. And I didn't like carting around my knitting needles because they were, you know, sharp or too tall. And I thought, you know what, I might, I might just try crochet again. And I got back into crochet. I started sort of looking for crochet on the internet. And this was, you know, 20 odd years ago. There was some, but not a lot. Uh, not as, not the kind of community that exists around it now back then, but there was some fun stuff in the Wayback Machine. Um, I started collecting, you know, uh, old crochet magazines. I started collecting old books on crochet, different stitches, um, while still collecting stuff on embroidery and knitting. I've got quite a uh, quite a reference library. I'm happy to say I've kept all those books that I've been collecting over the the decades. And um, at some point, I don't know when to be actually exact, I just only started picking up my hook and crocheting. I, I guess I found it fast to make things. I found it really fun and amusing. Um, I like making things for people. Like I like making gifts for people. Um, I, I, the stuff that I wanted to give people, um, I could never really find what I wanted in the store. So I started, you know, making my own things. Um, and I found that crochet let me do that the most efficiently. So I don't really know exactly when it happened for me, but I kind of picked up my hook somewhere probably in my 20s and I never put it down again. I will take a break from crochet. We're talking like a matter of days and that's usually only because my flare-ups are bad enough that I, I just can't comfortably grip a hook. Um, and then I just I just keep going. As soon as I can pick up my hook again, I start crocheting. I, I love it. Oh, a super chat. Oh, thank you, Diane. That was a good way of explaining our life phases. <laughs> it is. I think, and it, it, obviously, the older you get, the more you recognize that you kind of go through these cycles. Like, I think you're you're able. You've got more life experience to draw on. You can. You're seeing the. You're seeing the patterns of your own life starting to repeat. And you're going, oh. Hey, I remember the last time I was into that, or I remember why I got into that. Um, it's it's kind of fun. That's one of my favorite things about aging is that I I get to recognize these patterns that form in my life and how they kind of affect oh the 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 hobbies I like, the the things I like to eat, the places I like to visit. Um, I don't know. I, I like that part about aging. It's it kind of like you're you're on this really fantastic journey. And you're you're learning about yourself as you go, and life is less and less of a. I guess for me, I'm going to say I don't know if it's the same for everybody, but even though a lot of suffering comes with aging, you know, your body starts to fall apart, maybe your brain isn't is doing what it used to. Um, there's a lot of wonderful stuff that comes with aging, and one of it, one of those things for me is this this ability to look backwards. And every year that goes by, I've got another year of springs, another year of summers, of falls and winters, another year of Septembers and Octobers. I have another year of, of 
good conversations and wonderful recipes and, you know, more experience crocheting or gardening or driving or, or, you know, writing, writing, you know, love notes, like any, any little thing. I've got another year of it under my belt and I'm, I give you love notes all the time. You, (laughs) um, so it's, it's kind of like, it's, it's kind of like all of these things help to show me what I should be thinking about doing next. I just saw somebody say they think they might get back into piano. Absolutely. Music is, 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 is the audio version of crochet. It's all math. It's absolutely gorgeous. You know, we were, we were designed to be musical. We were designed to be artistic. We are creative. We are a creative species. All we do is make stuff. It's really awesome. Even when we tear stuff down, it's usually to make something else in its place. Um, So yeah, if you used to play the piano, you know, maybe you should get back into it. If you used to play an instrument and you still can, maybe you should get back into it. If you, especially if you still have it, try it. You know, it's, it's amazing how much, how much your muscle memory remembers. It's amazing how much your brain might go, oh man, I, I used to have so much trouble with this little, you know, uh, this, this, this jump between this note and that note. And now, hey, you know, it's not as difficult as it used to be. Well, it might not be as difficult as it used to be because now in the last 10 years, you know, you've been busy doing something else with your body that has allowed you to make that, you know, that stretch musically, or maybe you used to be able to do something and now you can't, and you have to like redevelop that muscle. Aging is interesting, if nothing else. <laughs> little, little philosophy bite from Jada. We have some new ideas for a new song. Love notes down the well. Love notes down the well. Aw, that sounds like a romantic thing. Oh wow! Yes, I do like that. Um, L is having trouble with membership. L. It says that on her end that she's a member, and on our end she's not showing as a member, and she doesn't have access to all the perks. That's so bizarre. We have to look into that after the, the stream. Uh, quickly, L, if you can't see if it, if on your side it's showing as a member, and on our side it's not. Just double check that you don't have multiple YouTube accounts and you didn't sort of like log into a device with an old or a different YouTube account. Um, because the number one biggest problem that people run into, and it's it's not some it's not even anybody's fault, is that when we get a new device, we get a new computer, a new phone, a new tablet, we download the YouTube app, and then it's like, you know, log in for a better experience. And you go, oh, and you don't realize that you can just log in with the existing account that you have. A lot of people uh, think they have to create a new account or they get erroneously told to create a new account. You don't have to. You can use the same one. It's the same with the Etsy app or going to the Etsy, you know, going to Etsy on the regular Internet, on a computer, any platform, Facebook, Instagram, any platform that's out there that also has an app in addition to its regular landing page on the Internet. It's all the same thing. So if you have one account, you can use that account right across the board. So if you've accidentally got, you've made up another account, you might not even realize it because it was so long ago, that might be it. Um, So double check that you haven't got accidentally a couple of different accounts going. You know, maybe you've got one logged in with one, one email address that you don't like use any longer, stuff like that. Um, But we'll look into it a little bit further later for you, Elle, if you're still having problems. Does every row have to be the same color? Do all the mitered granny square blocks have to be identical? Okay, so right away, no, of course not. Um, you can do anything you want. Um, here's the thing: the mitered granny square is a very specific looking design. If you are going to make each of these, if you're going to make every row different, you might lose the visual statement that that mitered corner creates when you make blocks of color. That said, if you use the same concept, so four rows for the original square and then four rows each color, you can use different colors for each of those sections and you'll still get the same visual effect, but your squares will all be unique because those sections will be different colored, but at least they'll all still kind of act or looked the same way. 
But if you do say one row that looks like this one or one square, I should say that looks exactly like this one. And then another square where you made every row of your granny square a different color and then every row of your mitered sections a different color. You might not even be able to see that it's a square with mitered corners. Um, so the actual visual effect of the square may be muddied or change completely. If you only do two rows per color, it will look different again than this one. If you do all, all 12 of these rows one color and your main square one color, it will look different again. Um, but the trick is to is to make it so that you can really see that corner. That's the effect that you're going for if you're going to use the mitered granny square. If you're not sure and you don't want to invest the time in trying a whole bunch of different versions of the same square, and really, who does when you're pointing out a pattern, get yourself some graph paper or plain paper and just make yourself a graph, a grid. Get some colored markers and pencil crayons and color in different versions of a mitered square. So make one look like this. So there's, you know, four rows of the main color and then four rows of the mitered effect per color. Then do one where maybe this square is the same. So four rows of the same color, but then each row of the mitered is a different color. See if you like the look of that. Using graph paper is about the best visual representation of what your um, block or stitch based crochet will look like. Um, in this case, uh, you know, each of those graph blocks would maybe represent one shell. And it'll give you a really good visual idea of how that overall square will look. And if you're still not sure what I'm talking about, let me go to the handy dandy paper. I'll get some markers here. Let's see, I was just doing math. Let me turn back to that page. Wow, I don't know what, oh, I'm using a different book. <laughs> Confusing myself. All right, take a, take a crochet break and we'll do a little, a little drawing. Yeah, these are amazing notes. <laughs> okay, you know what? Let's just whip up a quick grid. So I'm gonna make a square. I've already got lines that go this way. So I'm just gonna make lines that are roughly the same size doing this. So I'm just creating a very basic grid. And then I will highlight those lines. So it's not gonna be um, as sharp and defined as say grid paper would, but you know what, in a pinch this works too. Okay, so let's say this is my bottom square. I'm just gonna sort of fill this in. I'll do four rows. All right, so I went up four squares and across four squares and I filled it all in. So there's my bottom square. Ah, it's all in black. Sure, why not? Let's do the next row in one color. All right, and you know what? I'll do the second row in that color too. So I have a <clears throat> wider stripe of sorts. But it's still only half the number of rows as my main square. Looks kind of cool. Uh, go with a light green. What does it look like if I only do one row of light green? Well, it makes that row look skinny. Doesn't take away from the mitered effect. You can still see that corner happening. Big square, slightly thinner stripe skinnier stripe again. You'll notice that I, I have, you know, I need more blocks over here to make it a, an official grid. I just sort of whipped something together. But let's say, let's say the whole thing ends about here. Um, I'll use a, eh, you know what, I'm gonna go back to this color. Why not? You could do this all afternoon. <laughs> experimenting with colors together, experimenting with the number of rows. So let's say that this part of the graph doesn't exist for the sake of the argument. Um, that's what it would look like if you crocheted a mitered granny square before you put on the border row. 
if you started with say a four of sort of a big square mains granny square did two rows of one color one row of a color and then maybe echoed this color again in a single row that's a very different looking i'll hold it up a little closer to the camera so you can see it that's a very different looking pattern than what i'm working on but you can still see that cornered effect happening um this is what i invite you to do if you're not sure about how something will look or how many rows and you don't want to actually crochet the whole thing because it's you know a lot of time and effort then sketch it out because that gives you a really good idea of how it will eventually look um, when you complete it um, never underestimate the power of sketching if you're the kind of person who never quite got past the love of brand new school supplies you know you go to the store in the, in the fall or early fall and you see like the new markers and the new pencil crayons and the new crayon, like all that stuff. And you kind of like, oh, I wish I had an excuse to buy it. Well, now you do. <laughs> I need to plan out my next blanket. I'm going to need a pad of graph paper. I'm going to need some pretty colored markers. And I'm going to need some, some you know, pens and pencils. Oh, that's what you need. <laughs> I uh, And you're going to need a binder to keep it all in too, because you want to keep all of your notes and the little sketches you make, because it'll help you when you're making another blanket down the road. So keep everything. And uh, there's an excuse to buy some fun new school supplies. <laughs> All right, where was I? Finishing this row. I'm gonna this this uh, this complicated tangled yarn is really slowing me down here, but that's okay. Everyone's talking stationary now. Oh, I love stationary. How obsessed are you with stationary? How obsessed am I with stationary? Like on a scale of one to ten, it's just below yarn. I'm not kidding. Little pretty. Um, matching stationary co collections, like a little notepad and the matching pen and the little ruler and the eraser. I just love that stuff. I can't get enough. I can't get enough. Brand new packages of markers and pencil crayons and oil pastels and watercolors. I just, I freak right out. A brand new sketch pad. Oh, it's like a fresh day. You know, nothing has gone wrong. There's no errors. I'm saying I need new stationery. <laughs> New stationery never goes to waste. And you know what? Let's bring back letter writing. I love getting like, like I used to love sending little notes in the mail to all my, my girlfriends. Um, I went away to camp one year and worked a summer and all of my girlfriends and I spent the next year or two or three until, until, uh, e until email became a thing. That's how old I am. Uh, sending each other hilarious little colorful notes and, and clippings from magazines and fun little detailed envelopes with sketches and stuff on them. I miss those days. Sending sending those things in the mail to your friends is just so much fun. So, uh, you know, buy yourself some cute stationery. Pick a, a handful of your friends that you have the actual mailing address for and send them a cute little note, you know, on that cute little stationery. I guarantee it will absolutely make their day, probably their entire week. Thumbs up to old-fashioned letters and thumbs down to uh, direct digital yeah thumbs up to old school letter writing and uh you know direct messaging is great but it's like it's it's kind of like how the telephone the telephone should be treated you know hi i'm gonna be at so and so and such and such at three o'clock this afternoon oh okay i'll meet you there click you know <laughs> that's that's the extent of the phone use for me i can't stand being on the phone i don't i don't like i i just the i don't like being tied to the phone I'd much rather read an email or, you know, read a letter or I just much rather read something because I can do it at my own pace. I love the phone for its immediate connectivity, but I don't like to be, I was, I've never, never really a phone person. Even when I was a teenager, I just didn't like being on the phone. My girlfriends did, but I didn't. The 
blue has now gone to the charcoal color, magic yarn. I think it has to do with the, the changing light. Yeah, it might be the changing light, Bobby. I think um, the color of the yarn is definitely heavily influenced today by the, the color of the light. Um, the light is just sort of gently changing. And by that, it's mostly because there are clouds slowly creeping in across the blue sky. So the, the light is changing. Boy, having this yarn tangled has made this the longest section of this gray square. <laughs> At least I'm getting to the end of it. Well, another note, just to sort of, you know, mention to, to, to kind of follow up the conversation about stationery and writing letters and stuff. I have to say, um, we often don't think about how things will look or what will be left behind. Um, if you've ever helped empty the estate of a loved one, like a grandparent or a parent, and that person was lucky enough to have a long and eventful life, chances are you came across photo albums, old letters. Um, if you're really lucky, stuff from their youth, letters and, and photographs from their youth. And it is like finding a treasure chest, especially if these people are related to you, because you kind of get a, a, a window into the way, not just the way things were, but the way they were. You know, you'll, you'll see... You'll see black and white faces staring out at you that look so familiar, not just because you watch that face age, but maybe because it kind of looks like you do. Um, well, we're we've we're quickly entering an age where our kids are not going to have that stuff to leave behind. Nobody is going to be going through emails if the email account even still exists. People, unless you have a physical thing, like a physical photograph, a physical letter you're not leaving anything behind. So, you know, 50 years from now, you may not care right now, but years and years and years into the future, if somebody is, you know, helping to clear up your estate, they might be very interested to know what you were up to as a teenager. Or, you know, you stumble across an aunt's old love letters from when they were, they were young. And it's just, it is just the thing of romance novels. It is just so sweet. And it's, something that we're losing because we're not we're not you know printing off the odd email maybe you are that's a good thing especially if it's something you want to keep uh but we're not printing off our photographs we take photographs on our computers and our iphones and you know that's great but do you print them off do you curate them in an actual physical album like i always mean to and i never do like i'm just as much a part of this you know problem as anybody else i guess um, and I think sometimes I worry about that because I really loved going through my grandparents' letters and their photographs and, the, you know, like you'd find a shoebox full of this stuff. And it was just a treasure, you know, it's part of your own history. And if they if that had all been digital, I, I wouldn't have seen any of it. So something to think about. New member. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, Sunrise Mama. I like that. That's a good name. That's so, a, that's a, a renewal. A renewal. That's, a re that's a, re a renewal, a re welcome. Well, then, re welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is my fourth colored section. So, I've got four rows each of the orange, the green, the current, and the gray, which could look blue depending on the, the lighting. I'm going to weave in my tails, and then it's time to put on the border. And this is when the fun part of the square happens when we square it back up again. So we go from working corners only or the uh, the two sides only to working, turning it back into a kind of a granny square, the traditional granny square. So I'm just gonna weave in my tails nice and quickly here. <clears throat> Pumpkin 
Pumpkin Tree Crochet says, I asked a sales associate at a well-known store if they carry photo albums. And he looked confused. Then he took me to the flash drives. Oh my gosh, are you serious? <laughs> That's hilarious. Imagine someone not knowing what a photo album was. All right, do you guys sell photo albums? Um, <laughs> I guess you could say, you know, scrapbooks. That's kind of still a thing, and that's essentially the same concept. Um, I guess the, uh, the concept of the photo album is completely gone. Well, it makes sense that photo albums wouldn't necessarily be something that sells quickly anymore because people are not... Remember, remember when like all the like the walmarts and probably other other stores like it we really only have like walmart in this country um remember when they created a in addition to their photo processing counter they started creating those digital photo processing booths you could kind of go to and stick your flash drive in and print off a bunch of photos and i remember when they would be full of people people would be lined up waiting to use these digital photo printing booths. And then while they were printing out, they were going through them and giggling and remembering, you know, whatever the thing was, the trip, the party, whatever. And I remember thinking, oh, I just love this. I love that we can print our own photos and, you know, we can we can decide which photos we want. We don't have to print the whole roll. Like, this is such an improvement over the original, you know, photo film thing. And then ever so slowly, there were fewer and fewer people at those photo booths. And then it came a time where you never had to line up and then there was no waiting and then you were the only person and now I think they've been mostly removed. They're not being used anymore because nobody prints their photos anymore. And I just, I'm like, wow, what's the timeline on that? When did that happen? I'm not sure I, I was really aware of it happening in real time, but now I can see that it has happened. <laughs> All right, here's my next my next question. So I've got this super skinny size, that's a size two weight yarn. I was holding it um, dual together to do this border because I really like the color and I'm trying to use it up because I don't have a lot of reasons to use a size two weight yarn. It's a little, little scratchy. I'm not sure if it's wool or wool blend or if it's acrylic. It's it's a ball from my stash, like my way back stash. I don't know where it came from. I don't know what it is. Um, is it even yarn? It's definitely yarn. <laughs> it could be like cat hair. But uh, it's not cat hair. It could be a dust bunny. Definitely yarn and not a dust bunny. But um, I like the color of it and I've been trying to use it up. So I was sort of using it in conjunction with another one. Um, to make this edging, but you know, I think I've got, I'm not trying to decide if I, if I use it, like I've got this little bit of the other one left over. Um, what I want to do is make two rows of it. I guess I could just I'm trying to decide if I'm still going to use it or if I'm going to switch to a completely different yarn. Mm -hmm. You know what, for the sake of the live stream instead of tang i had so much trouble with this tangled yarn it took me so long i'm just going to switch to a different yarn entirely so i happen to have size four weight medium acrylic yarn in that lovely natural color this is this is, is this going to tangle on me i am having no luck with yarn today what is going on you know what I will just unwind it from the outside. That's fine too. Oh wait, what's this? Is this gonna work? No, it's not. Just gonna make it worse. Okay. How many ends are there to this? Why am I having a weird yarn day? Look, I've got three ends. What's going on? <laughs> That's bonkers. Okay, hang on everybody. Information. I cannot possibly have two inside. How do I have three ends on the same ball of yarn? What is happening here? All right. Don't want that getting tangled. I don't want this getting tangled. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll figure that out later too. Boy. Sometimes diving into the stash takes more time than actually crocheting. Here we go. We are going to square up the square now. I'm going to start in the same place. I'm going to 
start. Actually, you know what? I'm going to start with a standing double crochet. Why not? So I'm going to hold that little tail down and start with a double crochet. And then I'll just hold that, pull that tail up. I'll weave it in later. So the top of my stitch is up top. I am going to begin with a usual granny square corner. So I'm going to make my first three double crochet. I'm going to chain two to create a new corner, three double crochet. So I'm starting by making two shells, shell chain two, shell chain one, because I am squaring up the entire square now. So there we go. Chain one, and then same thing as usual, shell, chain one, and every shell, or every chain one space, I should say. So this part's all the same. Have asked if you have any plans for the squares. Yeah, um, I'm going to make four of these squares. I'm going to stitch the four squares together. I'm going to give it a border and it's going to be a lap blanket. Um, so it, it could just as easily be a, a nice blanket for a baby because it's a good size. Um, 16 times two is what, 30, 42? No, what's 16 times two? Six and six, 12. 32? Yeah, it's 32. I am I don't know why I'm having such trouble <laughs> with math. Caffeine, caffeine's the caffeine's run out. So yeah, so these each of these squares is 16 inches. So uh four of them together will be 32 inches by 32 inches, which is a wonderful size for a baby blanket. Then I'm gonna add a border, which will give it a little more sizing again. Um, it also makes a really nice lap blanket. So if you're um older, you're sitting a lot. Maybe you know someone who is, you know, folks in the old home or veterans or anybody who maybe is sort of stuck in a chair a lot of the day. Um, having something to drape over your legs is so nice. It is so comforting because um, you tend to get colder, you know, if you're stationary a lot. So this makes four of these together with a border makes a nice little lapgan or alternatively a nice little baby blanket. Um, it's just a good size for a, a usable blanket. So that's my plan. I'm going to make four identical, stitch them together. Um, because I wanted to make an extra large mitered granny square pattern because a lot of people were asking how to make a mitered granny square bigger. And making 16 inch squares, you can of course use these extra large mitered granny squares in a lot of different ways. You can make uh, you can make a lot more of them and make it just a really big blanket. But the thing with a, a 16 inch square is that your blanket gets built faster than if you're using six inch squares or eight inch squares or even 12 inch squares. Um, so imagine like, you know, how we usually uh, in our calendar blankets, if we're doing a square based blanket, we usually make 12 inch squares. And so, you know, it's three squares by four squares. Usually that's our calendar blanket, 12 months, 12 squares, each of your squares are 12 inches. And it makes a blanket that's like 36 by 48. Uh, with a border, a little more than that. So it's a nice lap blanket size. It's a nice drape over the couch size, you know. But if your squares are 16 inches, well, then you've just increased the size of your blanket considerably. Now that thing fits comfortably on maybe a twin size bed. Um, you also can just, you know, use a whole lot of them and make a massive square. I made a king sized granny square blanket once using 16 inch granny squares. And Making a 16 inch granny square, especially if it's the exact same as the other squares you've made, you know, each square gets a little quicker than the last. So it doesn't take very long to make those squares. And then of course you're stitching together fewer squares um, than you would if you'd used smaller squares. So it's just like a faster, fun way to make a modular style blanket. Um, especially if you like to make modular style blankets, like, you know, blankets based on squares.
I've reached the corner. So it's shell, chain to shell, like normal. And then chain one to leave, and off I go. <clears throat> now, I'm going to get myself some more yarn here. Have a good afternoon, Kathy. Okay, working down the side of your square that had the posts on it, you've got two sides like this. You treat each space that is created by the post as a chain one space like you would between regular shells. So just because you're looking at the side of a shell, so if you look down here, this is the regular side of a granny square. You've got a shell, space, shell, space, shell, space. Well, technically you still have shell, space, shell, space, shell, space, shell, space. It doesn't matter that the shells are sort of going in a different direction. You just are still looking for those spaces between shells and you're working a three double crochet shell and a chain one into it. And it operates exactly the same way as these little shell spaces do down here. So you just look for the next space, work a shell into it, chain one, look for the next space, shell, chain one. And it works out. In the bottom corner, it's the same as every other corner shell, chain two shell, chain one. And of course, by the time you get down to this corner, you're at the corner of your original granny square. So that all looks very familiar. <clears throat> and then you're on the home stretch. This row also has posts, but you continue to treat these spaces in between as the same you would over here. So shell, space, shell, space, shell, space. I'm just not talking, Samantha. <laughs> What's that? Oh, I just Samantha just said sound question mark, and I'm just I'm just not talking. Yeah, just not talking. Giving my voice a rest and giving everybody's ears a rest. <laughs> Bobby says, Dana, you explain things so well. I'm sure even I could follow along. Aw, oh, thanks, Bobby. Of course you could. If you want to learn something, you will. There's a where there's a will, there's a way, as they say. It's true. I'm sure I could learn how to fix a, a car engine if I really, really wanted to. I'm not that I'm super motivated to do that, <laughs> but I'm sure I could. I'm gonna join with a slip stitch to finish off that first row of border color. Boy, come here, you. Our little tails in the way. And that is the first row of border finished. I've got one more row to do. 
I'm going to slip stitch across into the chain two corner because I like to work in the same direction when I'm working square. Now, you can always turn and go back the other direction if you're used to making your granny squares like that. From here on out, it's all the same kind of granny square shell row pattern. It's not, um, it doesn't matter how you do it, but I like to do it going in the same direction. So I slip stitch across into the corner because I like to start a row in a corner. Chain three, that counts as a double crochet, two more double crochets, finishes the shell, chain two, another shell, chain one, and off I go. And I'm on the last row of my giant mitered granny square. Try and keep my yarn from tangling. I had so much trouble with the previous ball of yarn. Still enjoying my coffee, Brian? Um, did I finish my coffee? I might have. I also have a glass of water over here, so. Shout out to L for the super chat. Hey, thank you, L. L says checking. I guess you're trying to. You're sort of experimenting. L, L is struggling to get her membership uh, uh, working, and uh, we're trying to figure it out. Well. That's bonkers, but um, have to check after yeah, after there's a couple of things I can check on our end after the stream, but um, uh, Elle might have to contact uh, YouTube support on her end. Yeah, there's um, actually YouTube support is pretty great. There's also, uh, I think they're also working on a chat, like a YouTube like a support chat box that you can use. I don't know if it's on that side, um, but I know they're working on one. But uh, I'll, I'll take a little look at things after the stream, L, and see if I can find anything out on this end. I just realized that when we thank L, it thanks you for your support, L, L. <laughs> L, L. I like that. Thank you for your support, L, L. And L is spelt with two L's. L is spelt with two L's. <laughs> It sounds like to me like there's some funny little glitch happening with Elle's account. Um, glitches are so prevalent in technology. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some kind of weird glitch. But like I said, there's a couple of things I can look at on this end um, just to sort of make sure that there isn't like an, an, an alternate account or something weird happening. Um, but I'll see what I can find after the after the stream. I want to finish my granny square here with everybody today. I think I'm on the opposite corner. So I'm rounding my third corner here. Two more sides to go, and then this giant square is done. So like I was saying earlier, um, when my yarn isn't tangling and I don't have to kind of pause and you know 
chit chat or answer a question or something, um, I can get one of these done in in less than an hour. I'm going to say, you know, maybe maybe 50, five, zero minutes. Now I do crochet quickly when I am warmed up and I'm not tired or I'm not in any pain. Um, you know, we all crochet at different speeds, but I'd say that knowing I can do one big square in like 50 minutes tells me that on my lunch break, I can budget to make one square. So if I knew I was going to make um, a big blanket, if I was going to make a, I'm going to make a, like, let's say a queen size blanket. What's a queen usually? Like five, six, six feet by five feet, let's say. Um, so uh, that is 72 inches by 60 inches. <clears throat> so 70 inches, 72 inches by 60 inches, and I'm making 16 inch squares, then roughly I need like four by five. So four across by five down. So 20 of these squares. And then of course I'll add a nice big fat border to make it, you know, as wide as I want and as tall as I want. So if I knew that I needed 20 of these squares to make a queen size blanket, just saying, then that would be 20 lunch hours. And that's, there's five lunch hours in a work week. So in one month, if I only worked on these squares on my lunch hour, I could have, and I only made one per lunch hour, I didn't like finish one and then start another one, um, then I know that inside of a month of lunch hours that I could have all of these squares made for a queen size blanket. So I like to kind of do little um, time management thought experiments like that sometimes, especially when I start turning my mind towards making gifts for upcoming birthdays or holidays or, you know, weddings or something. And I think if I'm making something in particular, I need to figure out, oh, how much time am I going to need to make that? I don't want to feel rushed. And I don't want to like, you know, over promise myself that I'm going to get something done and then not be able to do it. So I do that kind of thing. If I'm, and I find time management is easier to uh, work out if you're making a modular project, like a granny square blanket, um, you figure out how long it takes you to make one square. And then you compare it against something that's easy to measure in your head, like a lunch hour. Do you find it better to crochet at the table or the couch? Do I find it better to crochet at the table or the couch? Huh. Um, I, well, gee, I like crocheting on a table. Um, if it's a project that I need the, the, like that I, like if I'm working on a big heavy blanket project, I usually like to sit at a table because the table bears the weight of the project and keeps it kind of like up here where I don't have to constantly be picking it up. Um, but sitting on the couch is very comfortable. So <laughs> um, I, I'll make little things sitting on the couch. Uh, I'll work on big things sitting at the table. And quite frequently, if you're, you know, if you ever kind of just walked by and saw me crocheting and working on like modular things or even even parts of a project, I'm often standing. I like to stand while I crochet uh, and brace things on my knee and prop my foot up on a table. I know that sounds kind of bizarre, but I find that actually very comfortable and it takes some of the strain off my lower back. And then I'll switch my knee at the end of the row to the other leg. I'll put that foot up on the table and I'll work on that knee. Um, so I do a lot of my crochet standing. I find that comfortable. Plus, I mean, I sit so much in a day. I have become such a sitter. I'm going to try and work over top of this short tail. Maybe I'll, eh, no, maybe not. Almost finished. All right. Chain one and join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. That began the row and that is complete. Um, yeah, that's it. All right. Snip my yarn. Fasten off. Weave in my tails. Now, I think it's worth noting that I crocheted this square sitting at the table. 
I crocheted the previous square, kind of walking around the house. I was standing, I was sitting, I was kind of all over the place. So the actual weight of the square, the previous one, that uh, as I worked on it, helped to make it bigger. And this one, because I was nice and relaxed and I was just sitting at the table crocheting the whole time, made it just a little bit tighter. So even in between these two squares, my tension changed just a little bit. I did use a slightly different yarn for this gray section as opposed to this gray section. Um, but I don't feel like that changed it much. They're more or less identical. I've got a little strain of green in here that doesn't quite match, but I actually kind of like that. It's like a little, almost looks like an ombre peekaboo. I'm going to weave in my tails. If you're ducking out or just ducking in, uh, if you're ducking out, have a great day. If you're just dropping by, welcome. Hi. <laughs> Been at this for a couple hours now, I think. Two and, a two and a half. Holy smokes. Well, I'm just weaving in my last tail and then that will be it. So if anybody has any questions about mitered granny squares or granny squares in general, uh, please feel free to ask in the chat uh, while I'm just finishing up here. We'll answer a couple questions. And if uh, we don't get to your question, then uh, please leave it in the comment section down below and I can get to it later as well. One hour of untangling. One hour of untangling. It's so true. So we're going to, um, we'll showcase everything that's mitered in the Etsy shop. Yes. And then we'll put, we'll do a little sale. Yeah. So um, Mr. and Stitch is just reminding me, we're going to showcase our mitered granny square patterns, including the new one for this extra large one. Uh, we're going to have that up later this afternoon in the shop. All of, we have two other mitered granny square patterns and a tutorial for the regular mitered granny square uh, pattern. We're going to put those up in the featured listing um, area of our Etsy shop and our mitered square patterns will be on sale later today. So um, you won't need a promo code or anything. You'll know it's on sale because it'll show the regular price with a little, little cross through it and then a, a different price in green. Um, wait till you see that uh, before you pick up the pattern if you want to pick up the pattern. And um, that's a little kind of a flash sale we're going to have um, for the next 24 hours or so as sort of a thank you for dropping by and hanging out and if you wanted to pick up the pattern for today's uh tutorial then um it's a little little incentive i guess <laughs> um uh, following that thank you so much for everybody who's popped in and bought something during our big sale last week we had our anniversary sale so we do two big sales a year we have our anniversary sale uh and, and interestingly it coincides with the easter weekend and then we have um, our other big sale always happens um on the black friday weekend um in november so um, that'll be the next big sale we have. I love how this turned out. This is 16 inches across and it will get a little bit bigger as the weight of the blanket pulls it. I'm going to make two more and I'm going to make a uh, square throw blanket. It's good for your legs, good for a baby. Um, it'll be uh, basically 32 to 35 inches across and the same down by the time I have the border on and it's blocked. Um, so this makes like a nice, like if you want to put something down for the toddler to kind of like sit on the couch or, you know, to drag around, it's a nice toddler sized blanket, but it's also just a nice blanket to drape over your legs um, or to drape over the legs of somebody who, you know, sits a lot and gets cool. Um, so nice little sized blanket for that. Plus, you know, you can have fun putting together the mitered squares and in interesting patterns. I'm going to make it so that all of my uh, corner squares all touch each other. So there'll be like one here, one here, and then one here and one here. And then the mitered effect will go off to the four different corners. It's going to look really neat. 
Um, so that's the plan. If I get that done over the weekend, I will post some photos, possibly even a short video just showing you how I put it all together. If you're interested in seeing that or making one for yourself, this is such a fun, fast project. Um, making mitered granny squares is just as much fun as making regular granny squares. So um, we're getting more requests for uh, gaming and crochet. Gaming and crochet. We are going to do more gaming and crochet, everybody. Uh, I promise. Uh, we just haven't had the time, <laughs> but uh, definitely going to. to. You plan to do more gaming and crochet, and you plan to get into the granny square game uh, in the next. Maybe months or months. Yes, we're going to do more gaming um, and crochet over on the Mr. and Stitches channel. We're also going to do more um, episodes of the Granny Square game. We just have to set up our um, the new station. So if any of you watched it before, you know that we kind of had like the game board going and then me. Um, and we've uh, changed our um, all of our setup around. So we got a new craft room. And uh, obviously, Mr. and Stitches has, can't fit in the same room <laughs> with me and all my yarn. So we're, we're kind of working on the technical issues around that. And as soon as we have all that sorted out and we've got a new place to sort of set up and play, we are going to get back into the Granny Square game. Uh, Michelle would like to see a, a picture of the final uh, blanket. Yes, uh, Michelle. We'll definitely get a, a picture posted, if not an actual video. I might just do a quick little show and tell video. Yeah, when I get it done, because I know how how much more enjoyable it is to see a, a quick show and tell video, because you can kind of see it from different angles and stuff. So um, definitely going to do that. And um, if um, if you missed our stream today, the whole thing will be an archived video in a few minutes. Yep. Yeah. If you miss the stream, the the stream will end, and then it will become an archived video. Um, sometimes it's good to give it like fifteen yeah. minutes or half an hour because it needs to kind of on the back end, it needs to like, I don't know, check or buffer or reprocess or I don't know what it does. I'm not a techie. <laughs> but I do know that sometimes um, it looks better like the next day um, than it does if you watch it right away. And that's often just, you know, a matter of the way it was uploading or how much processing it has to do on the back end. Um, so you can always just, you know, but it's there forever now. So if you, you know, come back later um, or come back tomorrow, that it'll be there. You can sort of watch through it. It's also nice too, like um, watching these things on repeat because you can kind of fast forward. So if there's like a specific part of like this square that you want to see, you can just like play the video and then just grab the little red dot when you touch your, if you're on a touch screen, um, you just touch the, 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 player and your red red view bar shows up and there's a little red dot you just grab that dot and move it back and forth you can fast forward or review or re rewind same thing on the computer um and then you can sort of brrr, get to the part where that you want to sort of focus in on um and you know rewatch it again i just love youtube videos i love being able to fast forward and rewind at will it is just one of the best little tools um anyway um i think we'll leave it there everybody thanks so much for joining us i'm gonna get these made up i'll probably eh, i don't know stitch them together i'm not sure I'll, I'll put some more thought into that over the weekend uh we'll put some posts up on the community tab about today any pertinent links uh reminder about the little sale at the shop um we'll have this pattern specifically up in the shop a little later today if you're interested and um, a big thank you again to everybody who sat down with us today, hung out. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Please stay safe. Uh, keep up that wonderful, beautiful, crafty spirit that you all have. I just love this community. And uh, we'll talk okay, to you real soon. The, um, keep the, um, the pictures of the calendar blanket coming because um, everyone's enjoying the show. Game. Yes. Um, if you want to share... Um, your Fair Isle style blanket progress with everybody. We are aiming to do another grouping of posts of everybody's blankets as we near the May installment. Um, if you'd like to share your photo, please feel free to drop into the Etsy shop. You can uh, message us in the top right hand corner of the message box up here. There's a little tiny uh, square that looks like a little miniature landscape. Click on that. It'll allow you to attach a photograph. And uh, please let us know if it's okay to share. If you don't say that it's okay to share, we'll ask you because we don't want to 
uh, impede on anybody's privacy. We understand that not everybody's eager to share things. So um, if you just want to share the picture with us, you can also drop it off there. We're not going to share things unless we've been told we're allowed to. So feel free to share at will. Um, and yeah, have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. And uh, we'll see you here soon. Bye-bye.